All right, we're live. We are All live right. now. So I don't know if anybody's out there now. Um, we had some serious technical issues. Turns out it was my fault all along. What a surprise. Um, <laughs> but we're here now. So right. welcome, welcome to Chats with Mates, Joseph Tawadros. Hey, how are you, Jeff? I'm good. Hey, if anybody's, if anybody's out there watching, just post a couple of comments so we know that um, this is all working because I'm still, I feel like a complete novice with this shit still, you know? That's all right. We, we, we're, we're managed. We're online now, so that's okay. That's the first step. So welcome to Chats with Mates. Uh, this is the thing that I've been doing like roughly every week mm -hmm. um, with a bunch of mates. Oh, yeah, look, here we go. Meg Law says it's working. Alyssa Kirby says... Hello. Great. You can't see the comments, can you? But look. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, Meg. Oh, no. uh, Alyssa Kirby, got it. It's working. I, le I just learned how to do this as well to put it up on the screen as well. So there you go. Yeah. Um, so it's a pleasure to see you. We, um, we catch up as often as we can when you're in Australia, but it should be pointed out that you are currently in London town. Yep. Um, and so you're international, uh, mate. You're, you're, you know, getting international guests now. Look at you. Everyone's <laughs> lining up. Oh, look at this. Respect the look at that mug. Yeah, respect look the beard, too, just in case. That's uh, great. Yeah, well, I, I, my place is full of these gimmicks. So, so a bit of background about us, about you and me, why, why you're on chats with mates, why we are indeed mates, is because we, we bonded um, at a Kate Miller Heidke gig, didn't we? When we were both. <laughs> guest performing at a Kate Miller Heidke gig and after we'd done our little uh, little thing um it was at the opera house it was like a nice gig Miller yeah. Heidke eh bringing in the big yeah, yeah. yeah she kills she kills it at the opera house doesn't she Miller Heidke Miller Heidke love Miller Heidke um MH yeah yeah in the in the green room afterwards the big green room we were playing uh pool we we're having a game of pool and we bonded over Israel Folau jokes is Israel Folau on the table? Yeah, that's it. And that was where we're ahead of our time. This was before the scandals. <laughs> I mean, we, knew, that's... we knew there was something fishy about that bloke. Oh man, I, I, what, what happened there? I think COVID kind of got it's all been swept under the carpet, hasn't it? No one. A lot of things have been swept under the carpet. I mean, that's that's actually something that's kind of interesting around the world, and it'd be interesting to hear what you think about that in terms of. Um, uh britain but a lot of things have been kind of pushed to the wayside you know rightfully so at this point we've yeah. really got enough attention span to deal with one crisis at a time yeah. but uh what's the vibe in 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 england because obviously before this all happened you were still dealing with brexit and all this kind of stuff what's what's happening with that now you no know, i mean i'm kind of uh, i kind of wish that the, this would have happened before brexit <laughs> it might have delayed it a little bit longer but you know um yeah it's just a bit of a ghost town at the moment i actually got it i got sick man I know, I know you're, that, you're telling me this, so tell me about I don't know this. how many people I should I should tell that to, because you know, you know, it's like telling somebody you have herpes or something. But but maybe not. Maybe I'm stronger. <laughs> yeah, maybe stronger. maybe you've got immunity now. Nobody knows. But just for the record, I don't have herpes, but it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> that's how it would be. Um, but yeah, no, I think I, have, I hope I have immunity. I don't know. You know, and they're saying, oh, some countries might be pe uh, issuing passports. Bring it on. I'm ready, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's well, not fun. It's actually what not. The, fun. What was the illness like that you that you had, which we we presume you didn't get a test, though, did you? Well, they they wouldn't give me a test. See, this is the weird thing. Um, you don't kind of know, um, but all the symptoms was there. I, I had a fever for two weeks straight, so uh, two weeks of fever just through pa paracetamol. And then I had a friend whose wife had it, and then they kind of said you should get this medication and. Um, uh, a, a doctor prescribed it basically. Some. What some, was the medication out of interest? Some, some antibiotics. I don't. I don't know what it was. It was sold to me in a black plastic bag in the park. Yeah, it was one of those. Everybody... Man, I've got a problem with my moustache. One side's down. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's one of these. Uh, one's up, one's down. But anyway, I, I hope see, that. But antibiotics wouldn't work on a virus, Joe. Well, no, it's for the lungs, not getting pneumonia, because the lungs. Your lungs get beat up, man. Like you, you, I walked a few steps, and I just ran out of breath. Really? I didn't know if that was me beforehand because I've gained all this weight. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's either I was gained all this weight and I ran out of breath easily, but it wasn't fun. So I had extreme fevers, and then for two days, basically hypothermia. Um, so it wasn't fun at all. 
and oh, then man. and you do you live alone there in london yeah 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 so it's all uh yeah did feel, all... how did you did you feel worried about you know no you... not at any point you know i had a friend checking in as well and nursing me back to health so that's that was pretty cool um but that that yeah it's, it's just something people got to watch out for and it's, it, i can see how it would beat up someone a little bit older than me or with a yeah, with an yeah. Underlying condition yeah yeah oh well, good good to know you're back in fine form so uh and the house says know, joe is loud just as a you know loud good how am i andrew house is, is josh pike loud or am i not loud because i can turn myself up andrew house let's see what andrew house joe is loud yeah well, lol well. Yeah, I mean, does that mean LOL or is it a person? Is it a person with their hands up going like, oh, oh, how, how, is, is how does Joey's loud and then LOL come into play? Is that to take away from the embarrassment that I'm loud? <laughs> Sorry to bring it to your attention, but Joe is loud. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we're teasing you, Andrew House. Uh, oh, I'm very quiet. Josh, Josh is very quiet. Really? Okay, well, this is something we can rectify. Uh, thank you, Andrew House. Andrew House is our uh, informal technical support person. Thank you, Andrew House. I don't know. Is that any better, Andrew House? Tell me, Andrew House. Is that any better? And that, that's no. better for me, actually. You've you've gone up. Great. Oh, this is. Yep, Andrew House. Andrew House says. Yep, Andrew House says. You need to turn your volume up, Josh. Andrew House is quiet. Yep. And now Andrew House says yes. So. Crazy. Andrew Andrew House has given us the thumbs up, guys. Yeah, that's Andrew House. I love the name Andrew House. It's like, you know, one of those old mansions you walk past. Yeah, in Vaucluse. Let's go to let's let's have our wedding at Andrew House. It's beautiful yeah. up there. It's beautiful. The views of the harbour are incredible. Lovely. He's always complaining about the noise, but it's lovely. <laughs> hey, so for those that don't know, you are a, a well, not a. It's not a. You don't say a oud player. You're an oud player. Um, and I have known you for a number of years now before i i think it was i think it was before i actually met you i saw you receiving one of your numerous aria awards that you have uh received uh for the world music um category at the arias uh how many have you got you can say you can you can brag four i, I won't yeah. well see the thing is i they get uh, I, I my first nomination was in 2004 then I waited 10 years, and then they gave me the first one. Like, I mean, I don't want to be, like, ungrateful or anything, but, man, that was a long wait, that 10 years. <laughs> There's not 10 world music artists in Australia. Yeah, so who was, was, was it? Was it must have been the same person winning every year for 10 <laughs> years. A couple of times. Um, it, true story. What, the first time I'd uh, lost, 2004, uh, this woman came up to me. There was a guy called Seaman Dan that was nominated, yeah. and uh, he was 76 at the time. And I said, oh, I'm really excited to be here. One of the presenters said to me, uh, put in mind there is a guy in the category that's just about to, to die. That's what she said to me. And I thought, <laughs> oh, that's a bit weird. I thought, all right, fair call. Anyway, he, he won the award. And then three years later, won it again. I thought, wow, he really dug deep. It, it gave him a, a new lease on life to win that aria. It kept that's him going for another three years. So 10 years. And then, then I won three in a row. Now it's been a bit quiet. So, uh, you gotta wait. Gotta wait for somebody else to. It's been five pass years. By. It's been five years since the last win, and uh, you know, we'll see. How we, well, the problem is, <laughs> a lot of bands enter into world music when they just know they they, they can't cut it in pop. <laughs> so world world music for me is uh, is always a dubious category. You don't know what's uh, who's going to be in there. The Wiggles might be in there if they're not feeling good. That's a, that's the same with adult contemporary, which is like my my one that I have won. A couple of times, like adult contemporary, and then I, I at first I was like, I don't. You won classical. I did win classical. You're right. I won classical. <laughs> yeah, I remember you won classical. I loved your Tchaikovsky violin concerto. It was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. But I remember at 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 your uh, at your acceptance speech, or your acceptance speeches. I didn't really know you at first, and I was watching your acceptance speech, and I was like, Is this guy accepting an award for best? world music album or best comedy album because you, your acceptance speech was very funny and you said when you were handed the ARA you were like I think this is the first time that anybody's ever handed an Arab man a pointy metal object in a yeah, public something. place yeah something like that I do the Arab jokes you know I go there although it's gotten harder over the years to make <laughs> Arab jokes they're not leaving me any space uh, <laughs> yeah. what, what do you mean 
Well, I mean, the Arabs overseas, you know, there's always something bad going on or there's a focus. And then, so, you know, I, I don't get any space to make those jokes. They, they're a bit touchy-feely. But, I mean, but, but the actually... Audience, the Australian audiences are much more accepting of them. They go, well, oh, yeah, oh, that Arab guy, yeah, yeah, he's funny. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's yeah. Arab, but he's all right. He's funny. I, I was at your gig at um at the Camelot Lounge. Uh, it's, I mean, it seems like a lifetime ago, but it was only a few months ago. Um, and the thing I like about your like your on stage banter is that because you know you know uh, you know it's I mean I guess it's probably similar to me like serious music, not a very serious guy as a guy. Yeah. But you you are you know like you're going in between playing these beautiful, you know, kind of meditative um, pieces of music with your brother and the other two guys that you're you're playing with. And then you'd um, tear shreds off the audience and make these hilarious jokes. And then you go back to this meditative, beautiful stuff. And somehow the audience went with you, right? So, like, often you'll see, uh, and when I say tear shreds off, you're making them laugh, but you're, you're being, you know, you're being funny and rude at the same time, which is the best type of, of comedy. But um, somehow you were able to bring them along with you, whereas a lot of times you see people try and do that and it doesn't, work so what do you i mean do you think that's a reflection on, on your comedy or on your music <laughs> well, look, I, look i've always tried to you know, musicians take themselves too seriously i hate it when musicians take themselves too seriously yeah and i'm not saying yeah. everyone doesn't have a journey that's the beautiful part of it but you know um i think there's there has to be a good energy in the room and i i, I give off that energy you know it's all about energy for me and intention and the audience know that i'm joking around or, or basically I'm, I'm trying to create a good experience for them it's not about anything like the music is serious and and you know if i couldn't deliver on the music then i wouldn't be doing uh those jokes but i just have so much fun with the audience and, and with the musicians we have a good laugh and so it's always a bit of fun all around um but if i didn't think i couldn't deliver on the music then i'd be making no jokes um, <laughs> yeah that's a that's a really good point isn't it like if you, it, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Imagine that having no, you know, no pieces and then just you know, making jokes. It's just because <laughs> so a lot of the, a lot of the jokes are crap. I mean, a lot of my stuff is just not that funny. But that's yeah. that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> I went to that. I went to that gig. No, no, I went to that gig and I said I even texted you before I got there and I was like, uh, I, you know, I hope you've got your A material or something stupid like that. And you were like, No, I. I I don't, I don't prepare. I don't prepare like jokes before the shows. I just riff. And then I got to say, man, like I've seen a lot of stand-up comedy routines as well. It was funny and like topical, not just like funny, funny. It was like politically funny jokes. It was good. It's, it's most of the stuff we talk about backstage because th those guys are funny. You know, my brother's very funny. He doesn't look like it on stage because he keeps <laughs> a straight face. If you've ever seen my brother, he just keeps a straight face. No no expression whatsoever, but he loves to do that because it's kind of like the straight man uh, <laughs> routine. But yeah, no, I think it's important to make the audience laugh and to remove a lot of that emotional baggage. I play an ethnic instrument. Um, and so, you know, there's too much of that cliched stuff going on of, you know, composing stuff in the desert and, you know, falafel, <laughs> and magic carpets and all this Orientalism, which doesn't need to happen. Um, you know, I think the audience would appreciate it just as much if you make them laugh rather than just, you know, give them a, a sob story, which, you know, the wood player's done a million times and it's just become a part of the marketing routine. So <laughs> Right. So this know, is just, you know, this is what sets you apart in the in the wood in the wood scene. Well, I, I also think it works against me because a lot of the audience want that. You know, wood players are pretty pretty serious. The traditional uh, music buffs of the Arabic world are very serious. So they don't like me in affairs. They go, Who's this clown? And I get it online, I get those <laughs> You know, forget about, you know, the concerto that I'm playing or whatever. They, they, they're they commenting on clothes or moustache or, you know, it's 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 about that or bringing the Ud playing into disrepute. You know, I need to nah, go man. to Ud Tribunal. Is there know. is there an Ud Tribunal? Is there is there a pretty strong Ud community in all seriousness? Yeah. I, I wouldn't have a clue. Yeah, yeah. Ud is like that kind of guitar. So, you know, like that, those guitar groups that are really hardcore. Ud is the same, except they play the same repertoire. You, you've never seen a bunch of people play the same repertoire over and over and over. It's just, um... and then the other thing is, I, I have this thing with traditional music because most of the stuff played on the Oud and seen as traditional is, is popular tunes from the movie industry, which Egypt thrived in from, you know, 1929, their first movie, uh, till, uh, you know, the, the revolution of 1952. But there was movies in, up until the 60s, there was a big film industry and all the great musicians and composers uh, were film stars. So, really? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a guy called Abdul Wahab who, was, who, who really utilized the beginning of the Egyptian film industry and became a star. And another one, the most famous singer of the Middle East, a woman called uh, Umm Kalsoum, who's seen as a, you know, as a, a goddess or a, uh, pe people call it the fourth pyramid. Really? Of course, there's <laughs> three, so they call it the fourth. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, she had a movie career as well. She was a terrible actor, but, you know, a lot of the, so the songs were there. So, so you're saying that the, the songs that were composed for these films yeah. have, be, have gone on to become like standards. Pieces, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, standards. And these people that complain about, uh, you know, things not being traditional and stuff like that, these people talking about meeting dates at the train station and, you know, it's stuff topical to the movie. You right. know what I mean? Uh, you know, there's another song called Don't Kiss Me in My Eye. Yeah, but it's, you know what I mean? But that has no context if you haven't watched the movie. You know? No, it doesn't. It does. I don't understand. Don't kiss me in the eye. It's good though. I like it. Don't you kiss me in the eye? Don't don't, don't kiss me in the eye. The kiss in the eye is a sign of uh, separation. That's the next line. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, because know. like you've missed you've missed the mouth or something, and you've accidentally kissed him in the eye. What is it? Uh, they, they try and censor it anyway. So it's uh, yeah. I've never tried to kiss anyone in the eye. This has been a top date, love. Bang. Right. Yeah. What is it? I don't. Get, I don't. I mean, I right between oh, the brow. Yeah, yeah, good. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for. Uh, I, I love you. Uh, uh, let's get married. Just but right also, in the eye. A lot of Egyptian songs, they're, they're, the translation are terrible. You know, that's something we used to laugh about at, at home, try and find funny translations. But there are also great pickup lines in Egyptian songs. There's one that. Uh, there's one song where the woman says, uh, well, he, he says, uh, you know, I, I don't want to blink just in case. I, I feel sorry for my eyelash. Because if I blink, I might miss a second of your beauty. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So put that in the next song. I just did. I just did. Yeah, that's it. Um, and so, so in terms of like, so obviously, I mean, I know this, but again, just for people who don't know, you compose your own yep. stuff. Um, and after that gig in particular, I went on a bit of a, a Joe deep dive and started streaming a lot of his stuff. So if you if you saw a big spike around spike. Uh, February, yeah, that was a pike. That was a pike spike. That I noticed three hundred to three hundred one views overnight. <laughs> but it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful stuff, and it's not. It it is. Um, it's almost more like um, Jose Gonzalez kind of Nick Drake. It's uh, to me, it sounded more folk. You know, um, it's a big influence. Element. And, and, and also, and I asked you this on the night, there's the band, the, P the Penguin Cafe Orchestra, which kind of um, dives into a bit of almost Celtic and, and, and like that kind of era of folk or, or genre of folk. And similar scales and stuff like that and intervals, is that, is that something, is that actually just a you thing or is that a Middle Eastern thing as well? Or a, or a... I, I use uh, Middle Eastern scales. So I was brought up on the Macam system. Um, uh -huh. Arabic music uh, scales uh, are called makams, and there's a big uh, set of them. I'll send you some, Josh. You can use some some of the songs. Yeah, I can't read music or anything, but I'll give it. A, I'll, I'll have a look at it. Yeah, yeah, no, we'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's a set of scales which I like to combine and, and use it because that's my background, and my background is in the traditional music and in those pop songs from you know the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Um, so I'm, I'm really highly influenced by that, but my, my style is about going forward and trying to find contemporary uh, things while maintaining the integrity of the wood. You know, it's important to create to, to maintain the sound and the and the um, yeah the, the the timbre of the instrument because sometimes people put effects and all of this stuff on it and then it just sounds like another instrument and so yeah it's, yeah uh, you I know, know what you mean because it's useless you know. What was that? Sorry, say that again. If you put it through a pedal, you know, you might as well have a, a fretless guitar or, a, you know, it could be anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So have you got, have you got your oud there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's can, him. can we have a look at it? Yeah, here's the oud. This is the Joe Tawadros Signature Series. Um, built is that by, true? Yeah, 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 yeah. Built by a Turkish oud. So most ouds have six courses. I've got seven. And so it's my string length as well. So it's... it's um, yeah, so string. Uh, some woods are smaller, but I've I've got a, a massive string length. <laughs> so 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 hang on. So you, so you're saying this particular wood, most woods have six strings, but you decided you added a seventh string. No, no, no. See, the thing is, you uh, for wood players, 
it's usually six strings. You choose either this string to have that string, or you string it to have that string. So by having seven, you've got the whole range. So, but, but is that unusual? Is that something that uh, only you do? There's not many players on the professional arena that use a seven string. But I, I like it. It gives me a whole range of, of the this is this is the other funny thing about <laughs> about well it's not funny it's great but I remember sitting down we were having a coffee in Newtown one time and um and I was like I, I guess I mean I just don't really know that much about like the oud scene f forgive me but um but I was like uh so you know what are you doing when you go back to London you're like oh, I'm playing with the London Symphonic uh, sim the London Symphony and I was like oh wow like you're sitting in as a guest and you're like, and you're like no they're playing one of my one of my pieces, and I was like, "Hang on, what the fuck?" So you like, so you you've written a symphony with the symphony orchestra? Oh, I, I did a concerto, uh, but I was with the BBC Symphony Orchestra. I was, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. It was a fun experience. They did a a thing called the Proms Dubai, and so they invited me along, and that was fun. And actually, I got a new album coming out next month uh, where it has those pieces, but played with the Sydney Symphony and and Ud concerto. So a concerto being a um, a piece where there is a, a main instrument taking the lead and playing technical stuff and arpeggios and all that sort of sort of thing. And so um, that's what I did. I, had a, I composed a concerto and, yeah, play it around the place. Well, not now because of... No. Know, well, well so, so tell me about that. So, like, now that you can't um, perform, what, what, do you, what, is, what do you do? What are you doing? Well, I mean, I've been working on this album, so that still has to be done. And, um, yeah, just figuring it out, figuring out this challenging time. Because, man, you know, performance is life. It's that thing that gives you energy. And um, the online stuff has just been really hard. Although I, I downloaded this. Hang on. You, you might. Um, you know, because I, I have done a couple of performances online. I've got one tomorrow. If you're hey. up at 5 a.m. Sydney time, 5 a.m. Sydney time, you can get up and watch me on my Facebook page, the professional Facebook page. But I downloaded this because it's getting a... I don't know if you can hear this. Is that applause? Applause. <laughs> so, so after each piece, I can just... You know, I've got a set of applauses now that I can just work on. Um, oh, so you, just yeah. got a mess you just got a message as well, mate. Yep. Yeah, I just got a message. It said, this, this, this interview is terrible. <laughs> terrible. Um, that's yeah, it. Can you... you, so can you it's a challenging time, but I, I find that the, the world hasn't adapted uh, to paying for things online because there's so much free material. And artists, because they're bored indoors, want to give that free material. You know, there's some great musicians now streaming concerts for free, uh, although now I see a virtual tip jar, which I think is a good idea, just in case people want to contribute. But, uh, man, I, I don't think we've reached that because everything online seems to be free or you go on YouTube and why would I watch a concert and pay something? So there is still that attitude. and um, But it, it, it's, it's something that you have to try and, and, and um, yeah, because it's, it's a, a matter of survival at the moment. Well, yeah, so it's, it's something that I've been talking to a lot of people about is, is that concept of, like, how much do you give away for free that is still engaging and, you know, still, you know, you still have a connection with your audience and you still kind of, I guess, you know, continuing to strengthen your brand and, and all that kind of stuff. But how do you, how do you balance that with, with um, then the idea of going back out there live? And I, I do kind of feel like the idea is stuff like this. So like, this is a different kind of experience that I wouldn't do as a concert anyway. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, playing three or four songs live um, and then saving like, you know, a high, high production spec kind of gig as a paid thing. And that does seem to be a model. There's a thing in Australia called Delivered Live, which they're doing, which seems to be working quite well with that kind of stuff. So I think there is a model for it to work. Yeah, I mean, people are going to have to try and adapt and try uh, new things, but there's going to be a lot of artists that are going to be struggling. Uh, yeah, oh. Through this, definitely. Just, uh, well, I, I just think I don't know when, when are the audience going to have their confidence back to sit next to someone. You know what I mean? And that's not going to happen for a vaccine unless now you know they're going to seat, seat you two seats apart in a theater. It's not yeah. really going to happen. And and you know, music is about bringing people together, about intimacy, and about feeling that energy. And it just feels a little bit detached. But even on the street now, when I go walking on the street, I'm scared of people. It's like, man, this guy is not two meters away from me. Get away! I know. I'm, 
I don't say that, but it's it's a bit like that. You know what I mean? It's I do know. Yeah, I've become a real I've become a real snob of like um <laughs> like we'll be driving along the car or you know like we take take our kids on neighborhood walks and we walk in around the street and I'll be like, look at those look at those people. Huh? Yeah, there's yeah, there's yeah, four yeah. of them. I bet I bet you they're not in the same family. This, well, you know. You know, sometimes you know these people you know they're getting together and having dinners still. You go, come on, what are you doing, mate? Why am I indoors? You know, having yeah, make an effort. Or, but- Dog walkers, dog walkers. Yeah, oh. hey, if, dogs, if dogs got corona, we'd be doomed. We'd be doomed. Hey, yeah. check check out this comment. Check out this comment. Long time fan. Also, I now want an Ud immediately. Bang. Yeah, yeah, I love his books as well. Great books. Dan Brown, I know. I can't believe he subscribes to my YouTube channel. Incredible. I mean, the followers that you get, Josh, that's the type of ilk that I, um, you know, this is what made me want to just jump and do this. So Da Vinci Code, what, what you don't know is um, I'm actually the inspiration for, for, <laughs> for like t- he says, 10 well, years. Then, that's about when, that was about when it was written, wasn't it? I mean, da- Doubting Da Vinci is a good title. If you want to Doubting Da Vinci, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Hey, so, uh, so how about you play us a song on your yeah. Ud? Sure. I mean, I think we should release our song. You haven't worked on it. No, yeah. I haven't. I haven't. <laughs> I haven't fans, written it. Fans wouldn't would be just wow. Hang on, let me get back here so I can see. So, so while Joe's setting up, a bit of background is uh, Joe and I um, had a jam together one time right here in this studio, this very studio where I can show you around. Oh, that's a bit. That's a nicer angle, isn't it? Oh, look at that! I'm gonna move across here. It's much better. It's way nicer. And that's. Um, Tell us about those records on the back. That's nice. Oh, God. oh gosh! I'm, oh, and the arias too. I'm sorry. I didn't see. I didn't see those there, Joe. You got the typical muso setup, mate. Is that a whirly you got there? No, that's a piano. I took all the. Uh, I took all the fronts off and lit it up inside. I got some strip lighting from Bunnings, mate. Put oh, it in man. there. Bang. Um. Hey, just before we do this, there's a quick question from Pip, Pip Casey. We go back to live shows. Do you guys see this live stream culture continuing in the same capacity? Great question, Pippa Casey. Um, yeah. I think I think there'll be a version of it because I've really enjoyed doing this kind of stuff, um, but I'll probably do it less. Um, and but yeah, I think you know I think a lot of artists who have been doing this stuff and who have started podcasts and stuff like that, I personally think will be like, oh, actually, this is pretty fun. And you know, like I mean, I'm sure Joe will agree with this. Like 20 years or 30 years of performing on stage makes you um, realize that you're very good at being quick-witted and talking shit, basically, and having shit to say. So, like, you might as well turn that into something else useful, you know? See, I, used to, I used to do free online lessons for, like, you know, um, you know, just to give back to the community and stuff, and now it's just like, man, I'm giving free lessons and I'm not making any money, you know? But it's um, there was a lot of people doing it that were having fun with it, that, but now the market's swamped with every artist. Um, the one thing I do like out of this whole thing is that I've got the same amount of gigs as Beyonce. You know, <laughs> never in my career have I had the same amount of gigs as any musician around the world. You know, that's a, that's, that is a good point. I'm currently, I'm, play, I'm playing and I'm selling out as many shows as Ed Sheeran right now, man. Oh, man, that's unbelievable. Yeah. That is me and Dream Theater and Lenny Kravitz. Yeah. Same. All right, let's hear it. Let's hear it. All right, I'm going to play a piece called Dreaming Hermit. Um, all my titles actually seem to fit this time. You know, the hour of separation, permission to evaporate, Dreaming Hermit. So here is, here is Dreaming Hermit. <laughs> Thank you. 
great man thank you man i wasn't sure how long to go for and i was thinking you know i saw your face and i thought oh, hey, oh not this ethnic taking a 40 minute solo now <laughs> you just never know with world music once a world musician you know <laughs> there's these people that go, i'll play a piece for you usually the persian musicians do it or the <laughs> indian ones i'm gonna play a piece for you and then all of a sudden 40 minutes later <laughs> at, at the seven minute point your face starts to go come on mate you know quick well, my face my face wasn't doing that and oh, i you know what this no, is getting. Right. This is saved to YouTube. I'm going to go back and review the oh, tape. You looked very. You were very attentive. There's nothing worse. I, I don't know if you've had this, Josh, but you know, you go to a, an interview on ABC or something, and uh, the interviewer asks you a question, and then you're <laughs> answering, and they start fiddling around with their phone or they you know, they're reading something, and it's just like you go, "Is this person? You know, why am I answering?" Yeah, but you have to stay professional still. What's that? <laughs> You have to stay professional and then I end up repeating stuff because I'm a bit nervous that she's not listening or he's not listening. Uh, well, that's not what was happening here. I thought that was great. And I actually remember that song from your gig and that was the song that inspired me to say, uh, that made me think that you might have known that band, the Penguin Cafe Orchestra. If anyone's out there listening, um, well, there are at least five people out there. Um, the Penguin Cafe Orchestra, such a great uh band from the the 70s but it made me wonder because there was a lot of like almost blues stuff in there as well yeah. uh in your scales and that so what what kind of like pop pop music were you listening to when you were growing up that's a genre i like to call country and eastern that's, uh, <laughs> thank you very much uh, you yeah uh, you know i listen to a lot of habibi king yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh anyway please please entertain yourselves but it's that um yeah i mean there's i just grew up with everything and so it was just um taking in those influences. One album which I absolutely adore. I love it. You know, on Facebook now and Instagram, people go, oh, here's a nomination. I've been nominated. I hate those, by the way. I've been nominated by blah, blah, blah. To post oh, yeah. Just shut up. Just post oh. it. You know, <laughs> people posting pictures of themselves. So, oh, here's me 20 years ago. I've been nominated by blah. It's just posting <laughs> vain <laughs> whatever. You know, it just people are so vain and they just hide it behind this fake crap i've been nominated you don't need a nomination to post a photo just do it <laughs> um, so there, there's an album called no quarter by jimmy page and robert plant which uh, where he collaborates with an arabic uh, ensemble and when i heard that i thought man that, that i was a kid i was still learning the and i thought wow yeah, collaboration is possible with me so um were yeah, you like when you heard when you heard that were you like this is it. This is my ticket. The world is my oyster. I used, I used to play along. It was a video. My brother bought a VHS. My brother John, who he used to go to school with, I did. Uh, apparently, 
Um, he, yeah, yeah, he bought a video called, yeah, No Quarter. It was basically um, filmed, I think, in London, and it had clips of them being in Morocco and working with the Egyptian band as well. So um, I was really inspired. I thought, wow, this is really cool. It was my first experience to real fusion on a professional level. Rather, because there is a lot of crappy fusion, you know what I mean? There or is, con, I mean, con fusion. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah, that's it. No, no, but that's the thing in the world music scene. You know, people, marketing people just think it's a great idea to bring two cultures together, but they don't realize that the musicians don't have the experience to collaborate. So you get two people speaking two different languages at once, basically, rather than trying to find something where everything everyone understands. So it's a bit, you know, I'm always a bit wary of that world music stuff. And usually they do it through some sort of gimmick, like, oh, Silk Road or, you know, uh, kebab shop or something, you know, something that, you know, it's just stupid. Just stop hey. it. Hey, can I ask you a personal question? Yeah. Um, so I've been a little distracted by the um, cross-legged, like, donkey or something behind yeah. your left oh, yeah. shoulder. What, what is that? Well, that's my son. I'm, I'll go get him for it. He's a, he's a cool... He's, he's a cool dude. This is... Uh, this is Forrest. <laughs> I picked him oh. up at, at a charity shop. And now the crazy thing is, right, this, uh, he's a cool dude. Oh, shit, bro. This is next level. This is next level weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, he just sits on the chair. He, he's, he's an ass, basically. And uh, I love donkeys. A lot of people don't know. That's one of my favorite animals is a donkey. Yeah, I love all those weird animals like donkeys and sloths and just any, anything, you know, the underrated, you know, the underdog. Speak, speaking of sloths and underdogs, I um I've been for years I've been wanting to um show watch the Goonies with my kids, yeah, yeah. and uh, my oldest son is nine, and I decided that it was time to watch it, and there's the character in it called Sloth, that is the sort of um you know damaged guy that been dr dropped on his head by his criminal mother a couple of times, and I got to tell you man, I, I really enjoyed the film again, but it is highly it is a highly inappropriate film for a for a oh, child man. there's a lot of movies like that that we don't realize you know like you watch something you know what is it revenge of the nerds and stuff like that you know these weird films i knew that there was breasts in those movies and so you know i'd want to put them on <laughs> as a kid oh i love that movie yeah i love it because i get to see a you know a breast at 31 minutes you know <laughs> You know what I mean? These are the tough things. You know, like kids now, they have the, you know, not kids, but, you know, people have the option of, you know, that, that's like a free-for-all now. I go on Instagram now and everyone's showing their ass. I can't, <laughs> I've had enough. I've had enough. Like, okay, so there's this thing of unsolicited, you know, pee-pee pics, if we can say that, you know, that women receive. Right? Oh, yeah. What about, yeah, yeah, you know, pee-pee. I'm, I'm trying to keep it clean for your show. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, for my show, right? for my TV show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Then on Instagram, why has an ass become a free for all now? Like you know, I don't know. Oh, these, these are questions that I don't have the answer to. Well, like posting like you know, uh, post the picture uh, of of your of a body part you don't like about yourself. You know, it's to kind of you know, I understand body positivity and stuff, but you know what I mean. I'm not taking a photo of my gut. I've got I, look. If you want to see my ass, I have no problem in showing my ass. But you know, why on Instagram? You know, and it's obviously I, a part they do like. You know, and then they have to tag a million things. I don't know, no, man. Don't. This is this is going. I, ever since I brought up the donkey, this has gone gone in a weird direction. Oh, tangent, tangent, an ass tangent. Sorry, I was a bit. Hey, um, now I just saw a a comment which I want to put up on the screen because I don't understand it. I want some clarification. You, oh, that's I see. It's a clap, and this oh, is the oh. name. The name is you are a prototype. I thought the comment was "you are a prototype," and I was like, yeah, so Am that's, I, "That's a friend of mine. That's a friend of mine." Shout Is out! It? You are a prototype, mate. People tuning in from London. I told you, mate. You've become an international star. I knew getting you on this and yeah. saying live from London was hey, gonna. I don't even know, but there's people tuned in from Mozambique. Is that how do you know? How do you know? No, I'm just kidding. Oh. I just, I just like the sound of Mozambique. Oh, hey, what's your favorite tuning? Uh, Is that a question for me or for you? I don't know. JS, it might be Bark. Bark's tuned in. He wants to know. Uh, well tempered clavier. Um, it's just from the low string C F A D G C 
F. So basically you get three strings like the guitar in the middle, the A, D, G, and then it's all in fourths basically, whereas the guitar has B and E at the top, you would have C and F. There you, go. you you lost me at uh, C. You lost me at C. Hey, so what um, can you play the guitar? Not very well. I, I did this album called World Music where I play uh, 52 different instruments on it, but in an odd style. So basically, I just grabbed any instrument I could find and started playing it like an oud. So you, you, could, pl you could probably, if you had a fret, could you, you must be able to, you could probably play violin a bit because it's a fretless yeah, microphone. Or... Anyway, so I can play some violin and cello. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and I also I read that you um you went went to Egypt a bunch of times in your early adulthood to learn like the Egyptian flute and stuff. No, no, I just loved it. I, I I went over there. I was so keen, man. At fourteen, I worked paper rounds by the way till till I was eighteen. I did. I was a paper boy till I was eighteen, and I loved the job so much um, that you know. But at eighteen, I started to think, man, I think I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Paper boy. You can't have an eighteen year old paper boy. Was you know, this back this... in the was this in the olden days when you had it in a cart and you had the whistle and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never used the whistle. Uh, it was a hay market. I was the paper boy for Paddy's markets, right? In the in the early days, you know, before it became swanky now, Haymarket City or whatever. Um, Paddy's markets, I did that round and I was so good at it, you know, before people would set up, I knew everyone's newspaper, so I used to leave it to them. Just by memory, I loved it, man. I yeah, that is, that that's a that's the that's the sign of a true uh, professional. I actually, I gotta admit that I had a paper round when I was uh, nineteen in my first year of uni before I quit uni. I got it was a driving it was a, I was it was a driving paper round, and I'd get up at four thirty in the morning after being out all night because I was a uni student, and I'd drive around and and throw the papers out the window, and then after about two months, I was like. This is hell. What what the hell am I doing? Why am I doing this? And I quit. No, I loved it, but I didn't like getting up early. That's the, that's the problem. But I, I did I did that, and I saved up the money to go to Egypt when I was fourteen because I was so keen. I was loving the odd. Um and then that was it. Went and um, hung out with musicians, and you know, made friendships which still exist today. And so yeah, I love it. Did you what go to school? I, I went to the University of New South Wales, but I did I didn't have any formal training in uh, Arabic music. That was just, you know, off internet and stuff like that. But the good news is um, when I went to Egypt and met other musicians, I realized that I'd kind of done more reading than them anyway. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so it was good. Because I, I also didn't want to feel, um, you know, have that chip on my shoulder where I couldn't answer any questions about the music or the tradition or, you know, some of the repertoire. So I really learned it well and, and I really love it. And I still, um, and those Facebook, free Facebook lessons that I do about uh, 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 high, mostly about traditional music anyway. Yeah, right. Cool. All right, well, I'm going to play you a song now, Joseph. Please. And I'm going to play a song. Uh, tonight, I when I was leaving my... I'm down in my studio where, where you've been, and my home is up there, and I was coming out to do it, and I asked my wife if she wanted to request a song. Yep. And she, she asked for... Beg Silence. your pardon. A song called she she uh, she asked for a BTS song. So I'm going to play a BTS song. No. She asked for a song called Beg Your Pardon, and uh, so I'm going to play that. And hopefully, some other people will like to hear it as well. Oh, actually, yeah. Sorry, uh, somebody's just done this. So I've been asking people to write the theme song for Chats with Mates every every time it's different. Can you can you quickly write a theme song for Chats with Mates? That's with maids. It's better than going out on dates. Yeah, that's about it. That's yeah. good. That's about. That's similar. Everybody's rhyming that's mates with dates. Mates. <laughs> Why don't you? Can't, can't you do smoke on the water? Chats with, with mates. Mate. Chats with, Chats with mates. mates. That's good. That's a good idea. Chat with mates. <laughs> Chats. There you go. There you go. Oh. All right. Um, I'm going to try and play this song for you, and I rigged up this little um, echo, echo and, and delay here, here so, so it sounds a little bit cooler. Um, um, so I, can you hear echo and stuff? Is that coming through? Right. Yeah, all right. Here we go. This is a song called Biggie Park, live on Chats with Mates, with Josh Pike and Joseph Tuadros. Oh, look, the arrow, the arrow is pointing at... Hang on. Look, it's pointing at my head. All right. Here we go. Oh, that's, oh, that's I've got to tune, tune that up. up. Yeah, I was going to say anything. Well, mate, Josh is going 
Here we go. go. It's funny how you can miss someone even when they're sitting next to you. So I profess the loneliness isn't always by company cure. The cats are in the windows, dogs are at the doors, the lamps are lit and all the curtains being drawn. But you're warm in his heart when I'm warm in yours. Oh, 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 oh. But oh no, perhaps you have to get better. But if I beg your pardon, might I once again be in your favor? And I know that I'm not the one who. But I know I seem to think you're made to think of me right now. And every day in the treachery that lingers when the day is done for me. I long to feel the quickening that anything from you to me can bring. And actors never stop their acting and a singer never has a thing to say. But you're drawn to him. So I get drawn away again. But oh no, around you have to get better. But if I beg you, pride and pride, I want to give me your favor. And I know that I'm not the one of you. You think it nice, but I'm alive. It seems to think I make you think of me right now. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot. And for those curious out there, my tuning is D, B, G, D, A, D. That's a bit different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. What, what do you think about that? Dad Gad? No, it's not. It's Dad. Dad something. It's Dad Gad. It is Dad. No, it's da it's Dad Gibbard. It's Dad Gibbard. Dad Gibbard. It's Dad Gibbard. It's Dad Gibbard. Hey, by the way, I just want to go back to that, my donkey forest. Oh, is, Jesus. Uh, oh, God. No, no, no I, I went to the, uh, the Jimi Hendrix Museum here in London. Oh. One of the worst museums I've ever been to in my life. Everything's a replica. <laughs> you know those museums you go to, like the Mozart Museum in Salzburg? You go there and they go, oh, this is a piano he might have played. You know, it, it, it's, <laughs> a replica. it's a replica of one he played. Here's his photocopied manuscript, you know. <laughs> uh, Jimi Hendrix lived in this apartment in London for about a month. Um, and so they, they turned it into a museum. And he had a soft toy just like this one. Not, not exactly, but he traveled with a soft toy. And when I went in there with my friend, we were freaked out. We were like, wow. See, because he, he, he took it around because it reminded him of home. Anyway, okay. Little. So I don't know. Is that you tr you're trying to justify the donkey, and I just don't feel like you can justify the donkey. I think it's lonely here in London. That's why. Oh the, shit! You know, it's it's like Wilson. No one ever said anything to Tom Hanks about That's Wilson. That's true. And <laughs> Tom Hanks, a, fe a fellow COVID nineteen survivor, just like yourself. Uh, hopefully, we're going to meet him at the uh, the antibody uh, awards. <laughs> the antibody <laughs> awards. He's presenting. Uh, it's all right. Superior. You feel what? Superior now, you know, it's just got like this, but, but they, they haven't proven there's any immunity. So, no, that's the, that's one of the that's one of the scary things. They've they've there are people that seem to have still be ha, uh, you know still have it sort of four weeks after, or, oh, and man. and then, then there are people that seem to have to get it more than once. So yeah. The good news is I lost six kilos, but I, I put them on about three days later when I, when I had cravings for ice cream every day. So. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's it. You know, I thought, wow, six kilos this is great. And you know what? This is how bad my mind is. I thought I could do another bout of this if I lose. Oh, six. God. You know what I mean? Another six could knock it off and be 12 kilos. <laughs> it, it just comes back on. 
<laughs> Everyone's doing these yoga and stuff from their living room. I'll, I'll, I'll get COVID. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Go on the COVID diet. Oh, God. You can't, you can't say, I mean, you just did say that. And now it's, now you, you just made an inappropriate joke on my YouTube channel. What's, what's inappropriate? No, I was just telling you my experience, how I thought, you know, do another six kilos. All right. Well, I think you look great. And I saw your video of you, of you boxing, <laughs> of your, uh, <laughs> that was very funny. It was so much fun. It, it's really, you know, I watched the Rocky video and I tried to do it because, you know, I'm punching a chicken in my video. Yeah. He's punching you know, big carcasses and stuff. So, you know, um, hey, so we got to go because this is an hour on the nose now. All right. Um, so, thank you very much for joining me on chats with mates. It's better uh, than going on a date. Yeah, yeah, but I reckon chats with mates, chat, chats with mates, with mates, with mates Josh Pike. Yeah, go. that's pretty good as well. Yeah. Um, so, what? When is your? When is this album that you done um, coming out? Next month, ABC Classics. It's called Live at the Sydney Opera House uh, with the Sydney Symphony. So, um, yeah, check it out. Or if you're up at 5 a.m. on my Facebook uh, oh, uh, tomorrow at uh, yeah, 5 a.m. Sydney time or uh, 8 p.m. London time, I'll be doing a concert from my living room. So awesome. Original repertoire. Cool. What What are you going to do? It like, do you do it on your what What's your sort of tech setup for for this kind of stuff? I do it on, do it on my phone um, and um, yeah, just on Facebook Live, but my Facebook professional page, not my private one. Yeah, I, I my, assume that my, my private one's become my my professional one anyway. You know, well, that's anyway, the that's that's the weird thing, isn't it? About like when your name is your professional name. I don't have a I don't have a a like a social. Uh, Facebook page, and so people get the shits when I see them, and they're like, because you know everybody thinks that you only keep up with people on Facebook, and they'll they'll, they'll be like, oh yeah, I've been living in, you know, I've been living in Spain for three years. I just moved back, and I'll be like, oh wow, I had no idea, and they're like, oh, it's on my Facebook. I don't I don't know. I don't follow anybody on Facebook. Well, it's even it's even worse when there are on Facebook and they don't know that's happened to you. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just yeah. don't care about them anyway. I just yeah, well that's that's mostly my problem. All right, well th oh hang on, was due to errors in testing. Oh hang on. Dan Brown. Oh, here we go. Dan Brown has got some goss. Yes. Oh, look out, Joe. Due to errors. Oh, look out, Joe. Come on, Dan. Oh, so recurrence of the virus is not likely to be a real thing. Yeah. That's well, I mean, good. it's probably just less. You might be able to get it, but just less um, severe. But, I, I, yeah, look, people keep safe. Try not to get it. It's really not fun. It's not uh, fun. Yeah, yeah, all right brother well take care i'm glad you're, yeah. you're all better and uh i'd love to catch up with you next time you can yeah. leave the borders and come over here again we'll do it my man thank you for having me man that's great pleasure man chats yeah, with mates chats with mates take it easy over there in london doesn't rhyme with mates bye-bye <laughs>